Also, you, uh, we were just talking on the phone the other day, and you said you were, we were a bunch of punks and rebels. Now, that was an important thing in the late 70s. Okay, you guys, this is what he said. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not mocking that. I just want to say you had, like, a hardcore contingent of people. You had, what was it, Shrapnel, the Ramones. You had David Johansson coming on your show regularly. That well, was all legit. We left us alone. Buster Point Dexter. Yeah, it's we went on to the legit world, and we're still holding a fort. How do you like that? So what do you think the connection was there that your show, which was basically like burlesque vaudeville type stuff, why did the punk acts suddenly click in and they really wanted to be on the show? It became kind of a trendy thing in the late 70s to be on. I don't know. Legs, Legs McNeil and Roberta Bailey from Punk Magazine used to come around and then they, they asked if I'd like to meet David Joe. And then he came around and then he brought his shrapnel and um, it just started going like that. A lot of times they were fans, though. The Ramones yeah. used to watch the show. They they watch you know horror movies and slasher Joey movies and Uncle Floyd. I remember that Joey used to wear the U68 button or no TV68, whatever it was, like in every video. It's in every video. It's, so uh, the other thing we have to mention from that time, I just want reflections on Joe Franklin from you guys because Joe was a major issue. Joe ended up uh, hitting. Joe, we now you didn't do that tonight. You didn't do your Joe. Oh, are we now? Oh, okay. It's in our it's in our lawsuit. It's in our contract. <laughs> there was a lawsuit. Should we? Can we mention that at all? Two pages of lies about me in his book, oh. The Joe Frank, page 215 and 216. There, uh, the 70 sentences, all of them are false. Wow. He claims he put me out of business. He claims uh, we portrayed... Um, remember that? Yeah, he's a bitter uh, man. Bitter I don't know why he's uh, got it in for us. We don't know. Everybody in Joe's book is great, wonderful, but us. Wow. And Joe said that I made fun of uh, rabbis and Jewish people by spitting oh. in yarmulkes and blowing snot out of their nose. Oh. It's in his book. It's all lies. No, it's it's all lies. It's this is in a book? This is in maybe yeah. Gift of Laughter or one of those oh, books he did? The Joe Franklin book. It's Joe terrible. You can put this on cable in New York. People know. Just lies. Everything about it is lies. And then he said... He, he's, the, he's the godfather of show business. He could snap his finger and... <laughs> Kill your career. I think you're being, are you being ironic? I think no, you're. Joe, that. Joe is bad, bad about us. No, that's. But that was something where that was a brilliant parody you guys were doing. I'm witness to the Joe Frankfurter parody was really funny, and you had it down cold. Was it simply that you were like the the other guys who did the incredible shrinking Joe Franklin? It was just too accurate for his taste, or what do you think it was? I don't know about the shrinking, but we had like Artie would be the world's authority on pistachio nuts, <laughs> and uh, he would show up and sit there, and I'd say, mm, I want to say, yeah, how are pistachio nuts, my friend, and. And, and as he was talking, his, the tips of his fingers would be red. We just made little subtle things like that, and we didn't, uh, you know. You would show like yeah. films backwards, and, and he explained that well, there's various shapes in pistachio nuts. Some shells are easy to open. Some require a little work. Some are already open in the bag. You know, just this kind of thing. And he would then show like a book, a pictorial history of pistachio nuts. And Joe got it. That's way too accurate. <laughs> he, he said this is we were making fun of his guests. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was that was a heavy moment. But then you, I have a ta on tape somewhere. You were on Joe. He dropped the whole thing, and then he was your buddy again. I remember. Yeah, and until up. the book came out. Now I won't. I won't. I won't talk to him. Even though I listened to his show on the radio. Yeah. yeah but I, I feel bad about that. He lied. It's all lies. Yeah. You know when TV got messed up when they put the Osmonds on. Hey! There is nothing Hollywood or New York about the Uncle Floyd show. It stands alone as New Jersey's only comedy variety kitty adult show and much of its homespun humor hits close to home with its parodies of local personalities like ice cream maker and pitch man tom carvel mr carvel a few words about your ice cream cow how long does a student have to attend until his speech impediment is fully corrected <laughs> <laughs> and we are but the average student attends the Cavell Ice Cream College, which is open five days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. There's no school Wednesday, because Wednesday is Sundays at Cavell Ice Cream College. There's no school. Ford DeVito does not think of himself as a star or a celebrity, but he is unquestionably New Jersey's hottest act since Connie Francis. His fan clubs number in the hundreds, and his personal appearances and club dates are strictly standing room only. While some liken this fanatical following to groupies or even cults, Floyd Vivino views them as a special ethnic group. Local people who can appreciate a local boy making... I love you for sentimental reasons. I, 
I tape sick. I've been here with 103 degrees. I taped uh, with laryngitis. We go all... We never have reruns unless the station messes us up technically. Some kind of technical thing goes wrong. Please say uh, they want They give me holidays. We don't take them. We don't want them. We, we want to keep it... Uh, because we're live. We're not... We're live on... We're there every day. We're like the little star in the corner to our audience. People have no class. Well, now you had the, the peak moment was, I guess, when it was on syndication in New York. It was on Channel Four after Saturday Night Live at one point in time. That was around eighty-two, eighty-three, maybe. Yeah. It was exactly eighty-two and three. It was on every it's night too. Right. Yeah. We were on after uh, NBC Overnight News, I think it was. It was. So peak, though, we didn't make a dime. We we yeah. lost a ton of money. Now, how how was that? We air, I aired broke, and they took that money to pay the air bill for Channel sixty-eight. Yeah. So you were paying back an old debt on the 68. I hadn't realized until we spoke on the phone that it cost me 2,000 a week, and we were able to survive 100 grand a year, and they upped it to 500. So they says, well, they'll take the 400 from Channel 4 and use that to pay. And right, Muggsy knows all well, the the suits made money, and we went out in the, the best is we had the best ratings on one particular station in yeah. Texas that they ever had. But they had to pull the show off of the air. Why? It was a religious station. We were doing Billy Bobby Booper. <laughs> and they couldn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't in poor taste. But it was, it was really weird. And then Boston, we got pulled off and, the, you know, and stuff. But they still wanted it. Mid, uh, in the middle of the show, they took it off, right? It was canceled. In Arizona, I wrote a letter. I said, what do you people know about any of the Arizona? Go back to and, and making rugs and, 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 and looking at pictures of cactuses. What the hell do they know about anything? Arizona. So, so you were actually, this is, because uh, we're on cable access. I said I was the worst thing to ever be on TV in Phoenix. He stopped the show halfway through. It wasn't my, it was... Killed at the first, the 15 Viking minutes into the first episode. Get the heck out! It wasn't me. This is, uh, Artie does that bit. I bombed tonight, folks. I'm glad you weren't here. I bombed. Oh, people. I've always conceived of your bits as kind of negative humor anyway. Negative humor is exactly what it was. Whatever humor there was in the room was sucked out when I came out on stage. It's kind of a vortex. But that was something where, when we spoke, because we do cable access, there's least access in New York now, where it's Al Goldstein, Robin Bird, pay to be on. I didn't realize you had that kind of a deal at 68. I thought 68 put you air broke now. Oh, no, nobody put us on. We paid. I was an air broker. I bought the air time. So you got the Wild West City ads, our, our older viewers? Myself. They paid the freight. Yeah. And so the Chia Pet, all of those ads you were getting, you were actually approaching those sponsors? I never really, yeah, that's just part of a joke. They were PIs and per inquiries the station took, and they kept all that money to fill to fill any adjacencies. They put them on the adjacencies, not in the bulk of the show. Yeah. All of my spots were my, my uh, in essence, ads that I sold. And then on Channel 4, we did have Carvel and, and Newmark and Lewis and Crazy Eddie were behind it, but, but that, that money all went to uh, the packagers.